Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Callie and today I am going to be doing my August wrap up. I read about 20 books in the month of August, so my momentum is going strong, but actually right now, um, at the beginning of September, I am in a bit of a reading slump. Sarah and I have a really big project going on, so a lot of my attention is on that project and I just haven't been reading a ton, but I read a ton in August. So I'm going to continue doing the format that I have been. I'm going to go over the books that I reread in the month of August and then go from my least favorite to my favorite books for the month. I reread a total of five books this month, which is actually a fair amount of books to reread. So the first two that I reread are Five Dark Fates and The Queens of Fenburn. The Queens of Fenburn is a novella story following our triplets when they are young and still at the cottage and we follow the Oracle Queen. I really like this novella because it gives you a lot of context as to previous queens and I think that that's something that the actual books missed a lot. We only get one or two backstory on the other queens and I found them to be a lot more interesting. Five Dark Fates is the finale to the Three Dark Crown series and it was a relatively good finale. I liked the concept of the ending. I think it went, it did exactly what the author intended for this finale. However, I feel like a couple of our characters deserved better and I do wish that more of the lore and the history was integrated more into this story than it actually was. And that's really my only gripe. I gave both of these Kendar Blake books a four out of five. The next reread that I have on this list is Aurora Rising by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. I forgot how much I am obsessed with this world. We follow this ragtag team of uh, space cadets who find a girl who has been in cryogenic sleep for over 200 years and now she kind of has like magical prophecy powers and then our plot ensues. This is a phenomenal found family story and it's just so magical. I love the futuristic vibes. We have different alien races. It almost feels like the perfect combination of Star Wars and the Illuminate trilogy, which these two authors wrote anyway. So highly recommend this series. I will get to Aurora Burning later in this video because I did read that and I'm still in pain. The next reread that I have is I reread The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J Maas. This is a collection of novellas happening prior to the Throne of Glass series. So this is Selena during her assassiny aspects. This book, um, I know there's a lot of ways you can read this within the series. Most people will tell you to just read it in chronological order, which means you read this book and then you go into Throne of Glass. However, I feel differently. I think that you should read this in between Queen of Shadows and Empire of Storms because that's how I was told how to do it and I think that um, I got a lot more out of this story doing it that way and then jumping right into Empire of Storms and I obviously won't give any of that away because spoilers. But I did give this 5 out of 5 because Sam and feels. And the last reread that I have is I listened to the Hunger Games audiobook this month, which it was a relatively decent audiobook. I'm trying to get more into them while I'm working, now that I'm working from home again. So, but I do enjoy rereading the Hunger Games every year. I wanted to try it in a different format and I really enjoyed looking or uh, listening to the audiobook. I love the Hunger Games. I think that it is a phenomenal story. And if you don't know what The Hunger Games is about, I don't know where you've been. Okay, so those were my rereads for the month of August. So starting from, I actually DNF'd a book this month. Um, I DNF'd Given to the Earth by Mindy McGinnis. Um, if you watched my video last month, you noticed that I did not like Given to the Sea, but I wanted to give it a chance to redeem itself. It did not. I DNF'd this at like 40 or 50 pages, something of that nature, because it was just... The amount of content warnings that this should have had for rape culture, sexual assault, implications of sexual assault were horrific and I could not do it. So couldn't super tell you much about this. I know the first book followed a girl who was meant to be a sacrifice but only after she gave birth to the next sacrifice. That's where a lot of our like 
the issues I have with the story kind of came into play. I didn't like it. And I don't know, I love Mindy McGinnis's writing. I've read a fair amount of her YA contemporary novels and they are phenomenal. Heroine and The Female of the Species are some of my favorite contemporary novels and this fantasy did not do it for me. Next is a is Black Moon by Romina Russell. This is book three in the Zodiac series. I gave this book 2.5 stars because I really like the concept of the Zodiac, the series and how we're following a missing sign and our main character Ro has a lot going on. But the issue that I have found as I get deeper into this series, and I believe there's only one book left, is there are way too many plot lines happening. And it loses me because all of the focus is spread out on all of these different plot lines, opposed to what I think should be the main plot line. Uh, it just sort of gets swept under the rug and everything else, including that plot aspect, this is the third book, so I can't exactly go into it, feels lost and disjointed. Honestly, like this book, I really liked Wandering Star. I thought that it was setting up for a lot of really fun things. Nothing happened in this book. It was so boring. I, the only reason that I kept going was I was like, I need to finish this series. I need to finish this series. But nothing really happened. We got our big reveal. But other than that, that happened on like the last page. I, I, I don't know. I, I didn't care. Moving up to the three star range, I have Jacoby by William Ritter. This is a Doctor Who meets Sherlock Holmes story. And that is exactly what I got. It is Sherlock Holmes, but with supernatural creatures and almost alien-like plot lines. So Doctor Who meets Sherlock Holmes was the perfect description. It was fun. It was, however, extremely predictable. I do feel like our characters fell a little bit flat, but I'm hoping, I know this is a four book series, that that will pick up in later books, as I did enjoy the mystery and following our Sherlock delve deeper into this supernatural world. Next for the three star range, I have The Thief by Megan Whalen Turner. This is a very short, one of the earlier YA fantasy books where we follow a man who has, is boasts that he is the best thief in the entire world, but when he is captured and then offered a deal, he immediately jumps on it to prove his worth. I did find this to be really entertaining. The banter was hysterical. However, this has so many YA tropes, which I get that this came out before tropes were even a big deal, but it was very kind of hard to overlook those aspects. Overall, I think this series will end up being really fun and I am excited to continue because I've heard that this series just gets better with each and every book. The next book uh, in the three star category is Havenfall by Sarah Holland. This, we follow a girl who wants to just go into these cabin, this hotel up in Colorado where there is a gateway to different worlds and her dream is to become the protector of this gateway but when people start dying off in the hotel she starts to think that maybe this treaty between worlds is falling apart and her entire future is going to go down the drain. I did enjoy the world. I think that the gate to other worlds aspect was really fun and really unique. However, it was extremely fast paced and it almost felt like a clue very, it felt like Clue. I feel like that's kind of the best way I can describe it, where, you know, we were, okay, it was the magical wolf in the drawing room with the candlestick. It, it felt very Clue-esque, which don't get me wrong, I love the game Clue. Not really what I want to read though. The ending was very anticlimactic and really rushed. I think it needed to be fleshed out a little bit better. Um, and I think I would have enjoyed this more if it was. For the next book, Evermore by Sarah Holland, I give this 3.5. This is the sequel to Everless, which follows a girl in a world where time is currency and she is on the run with her father because he says that the city of Everless is after them and she's been told all of this, but when she gets a job offer to help save her and her and her father from death, she takes it and it is in the heart of Everless and she starts to unravel all of these secrets and mysteries about herself and about her family. This was also very fast paced, almost too fast paced for me, 
but I loved the backstory and the history that was integrated into the story. It was, it was so much fun to learn about and I really enjoyed watching our main character learn all of these things with the reader. I will say nothing surprised me in this one. I feel like all of our surprises were in book one, which is fine, but I feel like we should have been at, there should have been another reveal or something in this book to keep it going. Moving on to the four star category, we have Shadow and Flame by Mindy Arnett. This is the finale to the Onyx and Ivory duology, which we follow a girl named Kate, who is the daughter of a traitor and she's trying to hide her identity, but when an old flame comes comes and is almost killed on the side of the road and she rescues him. She is welcomed back into the city with open arms, but she still has that traitor legacy attached to her name. Plus there are so many other concepts going on in this story that is just sort of our main introduction point. I loved, loved what this book did. There were so many ethical and moral questions about magic that I feel like are never fully addressed in fantasy books about how people can, even good people, can fall into the trap of using magic in unethical manners. And this really explored that well. I did really love how this series ended or duology ended. I think it was very well done. The reveals came at very great spots. I was surprised during a lot of uh, book two, we had a nice time jump that I think was well integrated. And just the magic system itself was so much fun to follow and understand. I highly recommend this duology to any fantasy lover. Next in the four star category, I have Crystal Storm by Morgan Rhodes. This is book five in the Fallen Kingdom series. If you have seen any of my recent months uh, wrap ups, I have been slowly reading the Fallen Kingdom series and I am in love with it. I love everything about it. It is so much fun. It is Game of Thrones in YA form, a lot less incest, which is glorious. <laughs> this book, I feel the end game coming. I gave it four stars because I am just so attached to these characters. I need to know what happens to them. They're all my sweet babies and they need to be okay. And I feel like they're not gonna end up being okay, which <sighs> I have feelings. <laughs> I do think that this one was full of a lot of more background and history, which um, might've benefited uh, by being introduced earlier, but I do understand the why it might not have at the same time. I do still highly recommend this series. I haven't disliked any of the books yet, and I am so excited to read the finale this month. Next in the four-star range, I have Where Dreams Descend by Janella Angelis. This was a Phantom of the Opera meets Moulin Rouge-esque story, even Greatest Showman. Um, I felt a lot those themes in this book. Um, I really loved the Phantom of the Opera vibes that this gave off. We had a Phantom, we, we had a Christine, and all of those um, complex emotions and thoughts were in, very well integrated into this story. I did find the writing to be a bit cluttered and all over the place at times, but the magic system was really fun. It reminded me a lot of Caraval, where the magic is in your imagination kind of kind of feeling, which is always really fun to explore. The only other issue that I had with this is it was a tad bit predictable. With knowing all of the stories of The Greatest Showman, Caravelle, Phantom of the Opera, I know how these stories go. I know how it's gonna end. And th this was kind of no different, but I think these characters were very dynamic and um, had a lot of depth to them where I don't care that I know where it's going. I still want to follow them on that journey. All right, so in the 4.5 category, starting off, I have Beyond a Dark and Shore by Jessica Leake. This is a magical Viking story. And I was so hesitant to read this because the last Viking story I read, I hated. But this was everything I wanted out of a Viking story. We had enemies to lovers. We had a complex magic system. We had the Norse gods and goddesses playing a big role in this world. We had a realistic Viking moments of pillaging and taking over the shore. And it was brutal, but it was brutally perfect. And what I want out of a Viking book. In this book, we follow a girl who is the daughter of a Lord who she ends up becoming this general because of her magic. And when Vikings show up on her shore, she ends up capturing one instead of killing him because a crow, or I can't remember if it was a crow or a raven, tells her not to, and they have to end up working together to save the world from the released frost giants. 
and it was glorious in every aspect. Next in 4.5, I have Straight On Till Morning by Liz Braswell. This is one of the twisted tales where we follow, the twist is what if Captain Hook brought Wendy to Neverland instead of Peter Pan? And I was a little nervous because I've never been a huge Peter Pan fan. I Peter Pan has always been whiny and two girls are icky for me. But we barely see Peter in this story. It is all about female empowerment between Wendy and Tinkerbell. And I was living for it. I loved this. This was, I think, a perfect twist. We got a lot of actual history on Neverland. And I think one of my favorite aspects of this book is... It showed you the power of storytelling and I think that that's something not always addressed um, with a lot of readers and this book showed it beautifully. Next in the 4.5 category I have Forest of Souls by Lori M. Lee. This follows a girl who accidentally brings her best friend back to life so she has to go and work for the Spider King and this book was so much fun. The magic system was amazing and so rich and dynamic and I loved it. And I think one of the things that I really enjoyed about this is uh, most of our characters were extremely morally gray and I, you know I am always here for a morally gray main character. There was a lot of ethical, similar to Shadow and Flame, where we come into a lot of ethical dilemmas with using magic. And yes, I'm good on the inside, but maybe I need to do bad things with my magic because I can, because I have magic. A lot of these dilemmas were addressed and I loved that that layer that the author can add to the entire story. All right, and the last book in the 4.5 category, I have Empire of Gold by S.A. Traberti. This is the finale to the City of Brass trilogy, which I loved. It is a retelling of 1001 Arabian Nights, where we follow Nahri, who finds out that she is actually a djinn, and she is taken to Devabad to fulfill her destiny. And this is our finale. And honestly, it was a great finale. However, it was way too long. This is like almost 800 pages and it did not need to be. Um, there was a lot of fluff and a lot of just aspects that I feel like could have been shortened or even taken out to the point of where I didn't care that those aspects were included in this book. But the story itself, at its core, was phenomenal, and I love these characters. I cried at the end. It was a great book. That's just like, it was a, I had just that one minor thing, and I highly, highly recommend you go and read this series if you love Aladdin or anything. It is so rich. The world is beautiful, and the writing is so lyrical, and it has a wonderful prose and a wonderful story. All right, and I have two books in my five-star category this month, a little less than last month. The first one is The Dragon Republic by R.F. Kuang. This book, guys, The Poppy War and all of its books deserve all the hype that it gets because they are phenomenal. The military aspects of this were following Rin, who basically tests into the greatest military strategy school. And in the first book, we are introduced to how she is mistreated by her people because of her skin tone, her gender, and all of these other aspects. And A Dragon Republic just expands upon that. And I think one of the things I love about this is it actually shows the brutality and consequences of decisions that are made during wartime. And I think a lot of war-esque books in especially fantasy do not show that. They're just like, yeah, we just did the thing and everyone was happy. That's not a realistic thing to think about. And this showed it. It showed ethical dilemmas and the reveals for our history were phenomenal. And I just, I'm so scared for book three because this book was... The end of this book got me. I don't even I don't even know how to process the end of this book because I'm still working on it. And my last five star read, I'm still angry about, angry and sad, just all of the emotions. And that is Aurora Burning by J. Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. This is book two to Aurora Rising. And I just have so many questions on where this story is going because of what they just did. I'm so unhappy and scared for my little ragtag team and I I need more. I 
there's no way I can explain why I feel the way I feel without spoiling this book, so I won't do that here, but know that you just need to go read these stories. I was in tears at the end of this. I went downstairs and just like almost threw this book across the room because I was so mad and upset at what happened. And I just, there are so many great additions to this book. We get more of Zila. Um, if you've read book one, you definitely get a lot more of her perspective and her background, which I think was really needed. And you get an introduction to a couple of new characters who are fantastic, by the way and we get a lot more information and a lot more sadness so yeah and those are all of the books that i was able to get through in the month of august hopefully i'll be able to keep up this momentum in september but i doubt it like i said sarah and i have a project going on that i'm trying to focus on that instead of reading and it is already september 7th and i haven't even read a book yet so off to a great start but it's okay i'll live and so that's gonna be it for today's video feel please feel free to subscribe like comment all that fun stuff check out any of our links down below in the description and i will see you guys in our next video bye